October. Beautiful day. Nice to see you here. Great. Today, we're going to be looking at the really interesting topic of money. <laughs> Get the right finger. Money. We're going to be looking at cash. We're going to be looking at wallets. We're even going to be looking at credit cards and maybe even crypto coin, cryptocurrency, the Bitcoin. Why not? Do you know, I've just checked, is it $12,700? $12, it's gone up by 4%. Whoa. How do I know that? <laughs> I'll tell you later. So we're going to talk a lot money. We've got lots of language around idioms, collocations, talking about spending money and saving money, being rich, being poor. It's a hot topic. It's a very popular IELTS speaking topic. So we're going to have lots of uh, interaction today on the topic of money. <laughs> Great. Let's see who's in the house. From Uzbekistan, Sulkomor. Good morning. Hello there. Um, hola, Mit Wagela. Nice to see you here. Dilio, hi. Mem, good. Sendeep's here. Adam's tools. Interesting. I assume you're Adam. Hey, thanks, Adam. Uh, Isai Charan Reddy. Nice to see you. Diehard fan. Thank you very, very much. JT Balubor with your mask on. I hope things are getting better or at least, well, it seems around Europe, things are not getting better. Things are getting worse with the COVID as we go into autumn and winter. But everybody stay safe. So nice to see you all here today. We are, as I mentioned, on the topic of money. Um, just before we dive in, if you are on uh, YouTube, then please do remember to subscribe to the channel so you can find out about my videos at the weekend, normally Sunday, and also future live classes, right, which at the moment are on Thursdays, 10 o'clock Spain time, looking at different IELTS speaking topics and the language you'll need for them. Great. If you're new here, um, my name is Keith um, from the Keith Speaking Academy. Um, I run the website which is www.keithspeakingacademy, where you can find out lots of stuff, lots of information about the speaking test, um, tips and ideas for IELTS, and lots of material to help you study. In fact, I'm going to show you, right, because the material is all here on the website, um, and lots of it is in the free live lessons tab here. So actually, after the class... Um, three or four hours later, I upload all the notes we've had um, and you are able, you are or will be able to find them here. They're all free, but if you do want to leave a donation to help me, you can. But otherwise, you can just go through and you can find out all of the notes. You can download them here. If you're on a mobile phone and you just want to read them directly, then just click and you can go and get all the information. Uh, we did photography last week, which was great. So you can get all the information there about photography. There's the links, questions, lots of practice. It's all there, right? So three or four hours after the lesson, that's where you will find the notes. And if you haven't joined the Facebook group, come along and join us. There's lots of exciting things happen happening. Um, we're sharing tips and ideas, um, lots of questions about the topics that we do. So you can actually practice uh, getting ideas. Um, and also we have a lucky draw. So every Friday, a lucky draw, I give away for free one of my online courses. Um, so anybody who comments on my Friday lucky draw post can win a course. Great. And the courses are, well, there's two now. I've got IELTS Speaking Success, which is on Udemy. And coming very, very soon, I have a second course, which is Fluency for IELTS Speaking. This is a course, it's based on the Fluency Gym. It's intense practice to improve your fluency and intonation, actually. Very natural English intonation. Um, this course is going to be on Udemy. I was planning for Sunday, but it's all been put onto Udemy. They have to approve it. Um, it's taking longer than they normally does. So I think Monday or Tuesday next week, it will be ready. And you and I will tell you and you can go and uh, go and have a look if it's right for you. Of course, 
great. Let's come back to money. <laughs> Let's see how you guys are doing. Hey, Shakun. Hello. Nice to see you. And uh, Richard, shout out. There you go. There's your shout out, Richard. Sandy, good morning. Syed Arshad, nice to see you here. Facebook, guys, I can't see your name. I do apologize. I know you're there, but I can't see the names. Alea Velasquez, money, and she's got all the dollars and the swag bag, everything ready to collect the money. Right, brilliant. Nima, hello. Great. So, listen, let's start, as normal, um, looking at a bit of um, vocabulary, some kind of basic vocabulary or essential vocabulary, let's say, on the topic of money. And I'm going to begin with a mistake because... Mistakes are how we learn. Hooray! Embrace your mistakes. So sometimes, and I think because of a translation problem, people say, yes, I gained money, right? Now, you can gain weight and get fatter, but we don't really gain money. Um, so what we would say is I earn money. So by working, right? If you're working, then you're going to earn money, earn a wage, earn a salary, by that's earning money by adding value or <laughs> adding value the reason i add that right is because i remember i learned this years ago right it's a really interesting story right a guy is working um in in a company and says well i'm fed up with this company they just don't pay enough right my salary is so low they don't pay enough and he was speaking to his boss um, and he said, I think I'm going to leave because I just don't get enough money. Um, and his boss said to him, it's not that the company doesn't pay enough. It's that they don't pay you enough because they pay lots of other people more money. And the guy was thinking, oh, why is that? And the boss said to him, if you think about it, you get paid for adding value. The more value you add, the more you get paid. So if you're only working the minimum, giving little value, you get that much money, right? If you add more value, you will get more money. It's true in business, probably true in life, I think. And I, I have taken that nugget of information with me all the time. I think it's absolutely true. By adding value, you actually do um, make or earn money. Earn money or make money. We can also say spending money. Yes. Win money, right? But you can win money. That means that you're gambling at the casino, right? So you don't win money with a job. No, you earn money with a job. You win money when you're gambling. And just to make sure that's clear, gambling, we're talking here about gambling, like when you're playing poker or at a casino, for example, if any of you go to the casino, sometimes people think vesting, investing is gambling. It may be. You are gambling a little bit, right, if you invest. You can make money if you invest wisely, right? Make money. Um, yeah, normally investing, we talk about making money rather than winning money. But for some people, investing is like a casino, right? It really is. You can earn a fortune if you're lucky. So to earn a fortune is to make a lot of money. A fortune is a lot of money. Um, some other expressions here. He spends money like nobody's business. He spends money like nobody's business. That means he spends a lot of money, right? He's a spendthrift. It's interesting because thrifty is not spending money. But a spendthrift is somebody who spends a lot of money, right? A big spender. Somebody in the comments had a similar expression. Spending money like there's no tomorrow. There we go. Ah, it's Ulfi. Yeah, hello. Nice to see you back here. Let's bring you down here. Spending money like there's no tomorrow. That's excellent. Great. Let me add that one in there. Spends money like no business. She... Let's make it gender equal. <laughs> right. I mean, do women and men spend money differently? Of course not. Of course not. All the husbands are going, mm, I don't know. Of course not. It depends on the person. She spends money like there 
is no tomorrow. You probably have similar expressions in your own language, I suppose. This is a lovely expression we have in England. He has more money than sense, right? Which is the same idea. He's spending money like there's no tomorrow. I mean, spending too much money on stupid things that he doesn't need. He has more money than sense, than common sense. <laughs> Great. Some people are like that. <laughs> right. Donating money, as Adam says, you can donate money as well. Let's add that on because that's probably worth putting in. You can donate money. And that, as you say, is to charity, which is great. You can donate money. So these are all different collocations, right? Now, if you're interested in collocations, I am going to recommend this tool to you, right? Um, and I recommend this a lot, but I think it's such a powerful tool, right? Osdic.com, right? It's a collocation dictionary. So if you're not sure, is it make money, win money, save money? And how, what other words can I use with money? Go to Osdic. I mean, it's a... It's a treasure box, right? It can make you very linguistically wealthy. You will learn and earn so much through it. So let's put in money, right? And here, absolutely amazing. I mean, I just I just love this. So it gives you adjectives, right? Big money, easy money, <laughs> making easy money, Um Private money, pocket money, right? Spending money for children. We talk about children having spending money. The verbs, whoops, have, borrow, bring in, collect, earn, get, make, raise, receive. Wow, look at that. I mean, that is absolutely brilliant. And you can go through, I won't go through all of them now, but um, stash away. So save, look at this, right? Save set aside, stash away. Wow, great language. So it's it's a great tool. Um, or, you know, go, go and use it. It's Osdic and it's absolutely brilliant. <laughs> In my humble opinion. And it is just a humble opinion. Okay, so let's um, have a look. I'm going to give you a, a little test now. I'm going to show you three questions. And it's a gap fill. See if you can tell me the missing word in the comment box. Just put number one, two, and three and put what the missing word is, right? Are you ready? There you go. What do you think? Right, there's a bit of a lag on the comments, so I'm going to wait a moment. Gautam, well done for number one. Delio as well, well done. Remember, just put the number so I know which one you're saying. Emily, nice to see you again. And spot on, yes. Rishant, number two, not quite. Number two is a bit difficult. OK, everybody's got number one spot on, right? That's quite a common expression. It cost an arm and a leg. Quite a common expression. Well done. Um, I'll just underline it, make it clearer. It cost an arm and a leg. With pronunciation, right? Notice we do lots of linking here. Um, it cost an arm and a leg. Man a leg. Man a leg. Arm and a leg. Say that. Arm and a leg. It cost an arm and a leg. You can put it into two. It cost an arm and a leg. Or you can do it as one sound. It cost an arm and a leg. Excellent. Nice. What about number two? What have we got? Shakun says against. Oh, I paid against the odds. That's interesting. 
I wasn't thinking of that. Against the odds is is usually used more with you're fighting against the odds when you're trying to do something or make a change and it's not an easy one because everyone's against you. You're doing it against the odds. I'm thinking of a different expression here to say it was too expensive. Has anybody got it? Right, we have. Great, we've got Fyung. Fyung has got it for number two. It's over. I paid over the odds, right? That means it was too expensive. Thank you, Fyung. Fantastic. I paid over the odds. Again, if you can, um, you can do it as two phrases. I paid over the odds. Over the odds. Can you say that? Over the odds. I paid over the odds. Nice. Or link it together. I paid Dover. 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 Like Dover, the city. I paid over the odds. I paid over the odds. I paid over the odds. <coughs> Hunky dory. Nice. Number three. Oh, no. Sorry. Number three. No. <laughs> I've given the answer. Duh, Keith, wake up. I gave you the answer by mistake. I paid through the nose, right? That doesn't mean you're putting money up your nose. No, look, that's two pence. Look at that. Two pence coin. You don't see these very often nowadays. Two pence. When? You can't see it. When, um, where are we? Here we are. When I was a kid, right? This, two pence. You could buy a Mars bar, um, some candy with that. Now, you couldn't buy a piece of fluff with that. I mean, it's worth nothing nowadays. Absolutely useless. So why do we still have coins? Should we move to a cashless society? Some countries, and I'm thinking of China, are already moving quickly to a cashless society where there are no coins, there's no cash. It's all mobile phones, WeChat, maybe credit cards. Even credit cards are old fashioned, right? I think nowadays it's all going to be Apple Pay, Google Pay, swipe your mobile phone. Anyway, sorry, I'm jumping ahead. Let me slow down a bit. Um, so I paid through the nose. It was too expensive, right? I went to the shop and I bought, well, yesterday, actually, I went to buy some nails to hang up some pictures. Um, and I paid through the nose. They were so expensive. <laughs> okay, great. Now then, good. Any comments coming in? Cost or costs? Ah, Nazila, thank you very much. It cost an arm and leg. Well, no, Nazila, it cost an arm and leg. It was expensive, right? That's the past. So cost, because it is the past, it cost an arm and a leg. It was expensive. So I'm talking in the past here. So, haha, I was right. <laughs> Everyone say, why not costs? Why not costs? Because it's the past tense, right? <laughs> Of course, in the present, it would be. It costs an arm and a leg. Yeah. <laughs> how, to how to say it was cheap? Good question, right? That's a very good question. How to say it was cheap? Joruk. Nice question. Um, we can say... Ooh, it was going for a song? Yeah. Strange, right? It was going for a song, for example. That is, it was cheap. And again, I'm going, I'm keeping it in the past tense just for consistency. Can you see that? Let me take that up a bit. Up, Keith, up. It was going for a song. It was cheap. It was going for a song. It was, it was dirt cheap. Also, we say it was dirt cheap. If it was very cheap, it was dirt cheap, right? I got this motorbike. It was dirt cheap. Doesn't mean it was dirty. It's just very cheap. Anyone else for cheap? Are these idioms? Um, yes, Taruna, these are idioms. If, they, if the words 
have a slightly different meaning, like paid through the nose, because I'm not literally paying through the nose. It's idiomatic, right? They are idiomatic. Any other ideas for cheap? It was dirt cheap. Nothing's cheap. It's all relative, right? Cheap as chips. <laughs> that sounds like a Belgium expression. Cheap as chips. No, I think we say that in England as well. It was cheap as chips. It was pretty cheap. Yeah, you can say that. It was cheap as chips. It cost me air. I've not heard that before. I haven't heard that. Dead cheap, Ashraf says. Yeah, it was dirty cheap. It was dead cheap. But dead, right, is just, I mean, you can use that with anything. It was dead good. It was dead expensive, right? Dead just means very. It's strange, right? Why would we use dead, which means no longer alive, to mean very? It's very strange. <laughs> it's dead strange. Okay, excellent. Good question. Let's move on from expenses, uh, expensive and cheap. Let me just make sure you can see all of this. Sorry, there we go. And just on pronunciation, right, there's a lot of was there, W-A-S, was. When it's not stressed, we pronounce was, was. It was going. Can you hear the difference? It's not it was going, it was going. Say that. It was going. It was dirt cheap. It was dead cheap. It was, was. And there's a zzz, like a zzz, like a bee. It was, it was dead cheap. It was cheap as chips. <laughs> Great. Excellent. Good. So I'm going to move on. I don't know what's coming next. What's coming next? Let's wind up, find out. I've got a question for you. Great. We're going to talk about expensive things. Do you like to buy expensive things? Do you? Tell me what you think. Do you like to buy expensive things? Bum, bum, bum. The answer's got to be, well, it depends, right? Yeah, lots of yeses. <laughs> yes. Sometimes people say cheap things are more expensive. Which is true, right? Because cheap things break and then you have to buy another. Uh, and so sometimes it works out more expensive to buy cheap things. And it can be cheaper to spend a bit of extra money but get good quality, right? No, I don't have enough money. If it's quality, if the quality is enough, I buy expensive clothes. Okay, let's share a few of these. Great, good. Right, this is a nice one from Ha Le. No, I don't have a deep pocket. Very nice expression, right? I don't have a deep pocket. Uh, lots of money. Very good expression. Like it. Uh, Sadib says it depends. Yep. It depends. I wonder what it depends on. <laughs> Yasmin says they are value for money. So I guess you mean, yes, if they are value for money. I'm going to change that just to make it clear to me and maybe to everybody. Yes, if they are value for money. Value for money. So is not cheap or expensive, but it's the right price for the right quality or a good price for the good quality. Great. Right. Okay. And of course, here, so here, my answer depends on what. Trung says, obviously, depends on what kind of things we're going to buy. Right. Great. Very, very good. Just a quick tip for you, right? If you get this as a part one question, do you like to buy? Make sure in your answer for part one, you say I, right? Otherwise, you're talking to you too generally, right? So throng here, you say, obviously, it depends on what kind of things we are going to buy. That's very general. That's good for part three. 
But for part one, I would say, well, it depends on what kind of things I am going to buy. Because in part one, you need to talk about yourself, right? So that's just a tip. Throng, this is brilliant because I didn't say this was a part one question. But just so you know, if it is part one, make sure you talk about I in your answer, right? Be, be specific. Right. Tarek says, yes, I like to buy expensive things. What things do you buy, Tarek? What kind of things do you buy? Here's an example then, Saurabh. I love your avatar. That's great. If I have to gift someone, then I may fork out some money for the same. Fork out some money. That's great. Yeah. Do you like to buy expensive things? Let's add this in because there's some good uh, language here. I like to fork out on um, gifts. So I'm just going to change the font because I we have a different font, right? Okay, bear with me. Bear with me. I like to fork out on. Fork out money. You can say fork out money or just fork out on something. Great expression. <clears throat> um, hmm. Okay, I'm going to have a look, see what else we can share. Okay, Ishmit says partially, yes, because it depends on what I am purchasing. So purchasing is nice to buy, to purchase. You can use that when speaking as well. Not all expensive things are good, as I was saying, right? Well, sometimes expensive, yeah. No, not as I was saying. I was saying expensive can be cheaper. Not always true. As Abdul Razak says, you can sometimes expensive things are not good quality. Yes. Right. Elva says, yes, but I cannot afford. Now, this is a really good example. <clears throat> afford is a strange word. So we tend to use it. I cannot afford it. I cannot afford a holiday. I cannot afford. I can't afford a new car right? I can't afford it. So it, make sure you have it in there, but I can't afford it. <clears throat> right, spend wisely. Okay, good, good. Here's another final one. Chung says, no, I'm not a big fan of luxurious. Luxurious. I think you mean luxurious. Luxurious goods. Luxurious. What a crazy word, luxurious, luxurious. There's no X, it's a look, <laughs> luxurious goods. Right, brilliant. So do you like to buy expensive things? I like to fork out on gifts. I'm going to throw in a few expressions. I like to splash out on something. Same thing, right? Fork out, splash out, all meaning spend a lot of money. <clears throat> I like to splash out on something. I like to fork out. Um, I'm happy to dig deep into my pockets and buy expensive things. If they are value for money, that was a good expression we had right before. I'm happy to dig deep or dig deep into my pockets and buy expensive things if they are value for money. <clears throat> um, yes, but I need to keep an eye on my money or on my wallet. Somebody said keep an eye on my pocket. Ooh. <clears throat> pocket we use in different things like dig deep into my pockets. Um, keep an eye on my wallet I think would be more would be more common. Yes, I need to keep an eye on my wallet. <clears throat> what else do we say? Um, what else can we say here? Do you like buying expensive things? No. No what? <laughs> I can't afford it. Yes, let's get the afford in. I can't afford it. Um, no, I am. This is a nice expression. I am a bit strapped for cash. 
I'm a bit strapped for cash. Let me take that up for you at the moment. Strapped for cash means having little money, right? Strapped is literally, oh, how do I explain strapped? A strap is on your bag, right? When you carry a bag, you have a strap. So a strap ties you up. So if you're tied up or strapped, you're, you can't move. Strapped for cash just means you don't have much money, right? It's a strange expression, but really colloquial. Nice one, right? Don't have much money. It's a bit like I'm on a tight budget. At the moment, I'm on a tight budget or I'm on a shoestring budget. String budget. All of these meaning exactly the same. I don't have much money. I can't afford it. I'm a bit strapped for cash at the moment. I'm on a tight budget, excuse me, on a tight budget, or I'm on a shoestring budget, literally shoestring, <laughs> strapped for cash. Great. Be really careful with the prepositions, right? <clears throat> Lots of them here. Keep an eye on my wallet, strapped for cash, strapped for cash on a budget, on a tight budget, on a shoestring budget, all of those. Brilliant. Good. Um, so that's it. Listen, I'm going to move quickly on. I see lots of comments there going through, but um, frugal is a nice word. Yeah, frugal. I'm very frugal. No, I am quite frugal or thrifty. Right, careful with money. Have I spelt that right? No. <laughs> I can't see what I'm writing at the moment. The screen is hidden. Okay. So I'm a. Uh, no, I'm quite frugal or I'm thrifty. Frugal and thrifty. Very, very nice words. Great. You know, in England, we have. Pounds and pennies, right? This is a penny. Um, and we have an expression, right? If you see a penny on the floor, if you see a penny, pick it up and your day will be full of luck. That's what we say. See a penny, pick it up and your day will be full of luck. We have lots of expressions with penny. I'm going to spend a penny. What does that mean? <laughs> It doesn't mean I'm going to go and buy a piece of candy. It means I'm going to go to the toilet. I need to spend a penny. Do you know when you're in those maybe embarrassing situations and you need a toilet, but you don't want to say, I want to go to the toilet. He goes, I need to spend a penny. And if it's a British person, they go, oh, OK, toilet's over there. If they're not British, they'll probably say, well, the shops are closed. <laughs> I need to spend a penny. Why? Because in the good old days, right, when we had the public toilets, you had to put a coin, a penny, into the door to open the door to use the public toilet. Hence the expression, I want to spend a penny. <laughs> right? Brilliant. Listen, I can see lots of brilliant expressions coming up here. I'm just going to share a few of them very quickly. I'm in the red, meaning... Um, I'm in the red. In, I'm, that's bad, right? I've got no money. I'm in debt. I've got no money. This is another British one. Very nice. Be a penny wise, not a pound foolish. Yeah. With similar one, take care of the pennies and the pounds will look after themselves, right? So be careful with your money. I'm a penny pincher. Yeah, which means I'm pitcher. Pincher. I'm a penny pincher, not pitcher. I'm a penny pincher means somebody who is a miser. So a miser is someone who doesn't spend money. 
right? So pinch, to pinch is to steal or to pinch, like pinch, ow. So to pinch, to, to steal or to keep for yourself. I keep the pennies. Look at these. Look at these. I've got a whole, a whole, can you see that? A whole box of pennies. I'm a penny pincher. They're all for me, right? A bit like Scrooge from the Christmas story. Ebenezer Scrooge. Oh, oh, from Oliver. Do you remember the guy from Oliver? I can't remember his name, but the, the, the penny pincher who's hoarding and looking at his money. By the way, I don't sit there every day looking at my money. The reason I've got these, <laughs> I'm not a penny pincher, is that these are British Right. Of course, in Spain, I know I'm in Spain, we have the euro, but in England, we still don't have the euro. We still have this strange thing with the queen. So when I go back to England and I come back to Spain, I always have some spare coins. So I just keep the coins here. So a penny pincher is a negative thing. It doesn't mean you save money. It means you don't spend money. <laughs> It's worth every penny. That's another expression with pennies, right? It's good. It's worth every penny. It's good value for money, we said. Okay, we'll share more of these later on as we go through the class, right? Um, now, a question that a student asked me, and I want to get your opinion on this. A student the other day said that they got a question in IELTS speaking about expensive things or an activity that was expensive to do. And uh, said, what, what on earth is an activity that's expensive to do? I mean, can you think of an activity that's expensive to do? So I was, um, I was racking my brains thinking, well, um, let me see, expensive activities. I'll share a few, but maybe you guys have got some ideas, right? So I thought some sports, activities that are expensive, sports, right, like golf, you need to buy the club, all the clubs, maybe the special shoes and uh, stuff. So if there's pricey equipment, pricey meaning expensive, then some sports can be expensive, right? Like golf or scuba diving. Holy moly. You have to buy the wetsuit, the oxygen tank, uh, the certificate maybe. So pricey equipment. Traveling can be expensive, especially if you're in first class then traveling can be expensive. Um, taking a holiday, especially in five-star, star, not start, five-star hotels. So if you're traveling first class, five-star hotels, these can be expensive um, activities. Anybody else? Expensive activities? Oh, yeah, shopping. Well, depends who you are, but shopping, says Sonam, can be expensive. Yep. Paragliding, that's an example of a sport that can be expensive because of the equipment. <clears throat> Similarly, river rafting can be expensive. Not because you buy the equipment, but I think just to pay to do it. Yeah, a speedboat tour. So all similar things. You guys have all been to New Zealand, haven't you? <laughs> ah, yes, Maggie. <laughs> Maggie's been to New Zealand. Skydiving in, in Queenstown. Maybe all of you guys went on holiday together. Skydiving. Let's do the speedboat tour. Let's go to New Was it Queenstown? Do the river, white water river rafting. All expensive stuff. Yes, it can be expensive. What else is expensive? Uh, hiking. Well, that's interesting. Is hiking expensive? Well, I think hiking is cheap. I think it's it can be a, as cheap as chips. All you need are shoes. But hiking can be expensive if you're doing the professional hiking and you buy the North Face bag and the North Face um, jacket and you pay for a guide. and So it can be, yeah, Taruna. It's a good point. It can be, yes. What else? Ah, tennis, that's another sport. Yeah, tennis can be expensive. Um, depending on the country, um, Spain has a lot of public tennis courts, so you can play for free if you can buy a cheap racket. But some countries like England, they're all, you have to book and pay to use the court, right? Um, and it can be quite expensive. Yeah. Good. Anything else? Horse jockey. 
Can you, I don't know you can be a horse jockey, can you? Tertiary education, where you go, that's an activity. Studying. Studying can be expensive. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Preparing for IELTS can be expensive. <laughs> Hedia. This is brilliant. I was actually laughing. That's a crazy idea. But no, it's not crazy because nowadays you can pay Richard Branson or Elson Musk. You can uh, you can pay these guys to travel to the moon. Right. Um, I think space travel is going to become the big the next big thing. So traveling to the moon, I think they pay about twenty thousand dollars for a ticket to go to space. Great idea. Yeah. Brilliant. Collecting. Collecting things. Collecting cars, I think, Sarib says. Let me add that to the list then. Collecting things. Collecting things. Um, yeah, that can be expensive, such as cars, especially if you're collecting um, antique cars or just antiques in general, right? Old antiques are quite expensive. Etc. 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 Collecting things. Can you see this? Okay, great. I think we've answered um, my friend's question there. I think that's great. Good. I'm going to move on. Um, a few more idioms because oh my god, lots of idioms. Money is riddled with idioms. I'm going to show a few idioms with you, um, and then we're going to watch a, a very short video. So let's have a look at the idioms first. Eating out, more mota, eating out, absolutely. That can be expensive. Okay, oh no, these idioms, we did on Facebook, right? I asked you guys if the following are true for you. Are you a bargain hunter? So you look for cheaper things or good value for money. Um, do you love to splash out when you go shopping for clothes? Um, and do you like to save for a rainy day? It was interesting, right? You can tell me what you think, but... Most people on the Facebook group said, number three, I like to save for a rainy day. I must save for a rainy day. We have to save for a rainy day. And I think coronavirus has shown us how important that is. Saving for a rainy day was very, very, very popular and important because we don't know what's going to happen, right? Splash out. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, talk of coronavirus. No, it's fine. I got a t I've got a tickle up my nose. Some fluff that's tickling me. Splash out, we said, um, is to spend a lot of money. <laughs> uh, great. Okay, everybody's saying, bless you. Thank you. That is so funny because... <laughs> Face-to-face, -face, that works. And it works virtually. That is so funny. <laughs> yes. Great. Thank you very much. Shakun. So everybody likes us to, to say for a rainy day. Um, there's the other expression, living on a shoestring. Right now, I know someone who is living on a shoestring. Yeah, that's true. So remember, that's living on a tight budget. They don't have enough money. Ooh. Don't have enough money to make ends meet. There's the other one. Have enough money to make ends meet. And I can't remember. I'm not sure why we say that. But the expression is to make ends meet. Um, is To make ends meet is to survive, especially at the end of the month. At the end of the month, you know when you your salary is almost finished and you don't have much money left? You say, oh, it's hard to make ends meet. It's hard to survive, um, to have enough money for food, for clothes and things like that. <clears throat> Great. Lots of expressions there. Enough money to put food on the table. Exactly. Yeah. Great. Hassan, thank you. Excellent. I've got more. I've got more. I think I've got more. Yes. <clears throat> oh, more idioms here. So here you go. I'm going to put you guys to the test again. So I've got four small idioms. I'm going to disappear. <clears throat> um, number one to four. Just write down the number and tell me what you think it is. 
Number one is something like having or had little money. Number two, have little money. Number three, to be rich. And number four, spend a lot of money. <clears throat> Great. I'm broke. <laughs> That's nice. <clears throat> Great. Number three, to be loaded. Oh, to be loaded is right, but the expression is he's something in it. Any ideas? Right, number one, we're there. We've got it from a Tuyed Maggie, and, and who else has got it? Facebook user Hedier. So we had to live, to live from hand to mouth to live from hand to mouth to when you've got little money i'm doing the actions and realize you can't see me never mind <clears throat> uh number one jaspreet well done sir excellent jaspreet says strapped and you remember that because we had that earlier great i am strapped for cash uh he's number three has anybody got number three Nobody's got number three. You've got number four. Splash out. I'm going to splash out on a new money. Or fork out, right? You can also do fork out. <clears throat> Great. Now then, what about number three? Ah, we've got it. We've got it. Somebody's got it. It's headier again before she goes to the moon. Hedia is, you're right, absolutely. Okay, rolling. He is rolling in it. Do you remember Rolling in the Deep by Adele? I'm not going to sing it. He's rolling in it. He's very rich. Or he is loaded, as somebody shared with us. He's loaded. It's a nice expression. He's very, very rich. He's loaded. Excellent. Good. Nice. Lots of very cool idioms. So, guys, I'm going to move on. Um, I'm going to show you a video. Now, this is actually a video I got off, off the internet, of course. <clears throat> well, not of course. No, sometimes I make videos. This one's off the internet. And it's about being rich, right? Being rich, is it a good thing or a bad thing? Well, being rich can be good because money helps us buy the things we want helps us do the things we want to do, helps us achieve our dreams that we have. But being rich may have downsides, right? Um, being rich maybe means that you end up focusing too much on money and not people and relationships. Um, you may end up, what? what's the downside of being rich? <laughs> everybody wants to be rich. No, not everybody wants to be rich. Being rich doesn't mean you're happy. In fact, I mean, proof shows us, right? A lot of people who become rich um, are actually very unhappy because they lose their friends. And they. you find out a lot of people want to know you because you're rich. So you lose your real friends and then you can be very lonely and unhappy. That said, <laughs> money is always very welcome. <laughs> Please come in. So being rich, um, this video, right, is about the, th it's one of these, what do you call it? I don't know what you call it, but it's a video that's about what wealthy people teach their children, right? You're thinking, oh, it's a clickbait video, right? It's a video to get you to watch. It's things that wealthy or rich people teach their children. And my question is, do you agree with these things that we should teach our children for life, right? So, sorry, let me get you in, in on the in on as well. Okay, being rich, a good or a bad thing? Do you agree with the ideas in this video? That's going to be the question, right? Do you agree with the ideas in this video? Being rich, is it a good 
not a good or a bad thing, but the things that rich people teach their children, right? Um, should we be teaching our children these things? So let's watch together and tell me if you agree with the ideas in this video. Okay, let's do it. First of all, let me make this bigger. Aha. And can I move it across? No, I can't. Don't worry. Uh -huh. Oh, <laughs> I'm having fun and games with technology. Bear with me. You can have a little rest. <laughs> so let's try again. Okay. But he's going, that was too fast. <laughs> it was super fast. What? Holy moly. Um, did you catch any of the ideas, right? Yeah, there was one or two ideas. Um, here we go. Polyglot says, success is free. That was one idea. Suc being, success is free. It doesn't cost money to be successful. It was way too fast. It was, wasn't it? Yeah. Listen, I'm going to have to send the link to you and you can watch it in your own time. But be frugal, right? There was one. Be frugal. So don't splash out on expensive things all the time. Don't always fork out and dig deep, but rather be thrifty sometimes, right? Spend your pennies carefully, right? Be careful with your pennies. Look after your pennies and the pounds will look after themselves. That's probably true. I think that's true, right? That sometimes be frugal, sometimes. <clears throat> So here was another one from Kin. Use your time wisely. It says use your time to learn and learn things rather than entertainment. So if you want to make money, don't watch Netflix, Netflix and Amazon Prime all day. That's not going to help you. Probably true, right? <clears throat> Probably true. And as I say, so use your time or, or as Milan says, to invest your time wisely. Same thing. And then Taruna says they talk about investing is a wise thing. So we can learn and earn as well. Very, very true. So investing money. So not only buying things, because when you buy things, you lose money. But when you invest, maybe you'll lose money, but you might gain, <laughs> earn you might get money or make money through investing if you invest wisely and invest for the long term, as they say. <clears throat> My suggestion is do not invest in Bitcoin or cryptocurrency um, because I'll tell you why, because I think the boom has gone. Um, I invested some money in cryptocurrency, but not at the right time and I think the boom went and then the second boom came when we had like $20,000 a couple of years ago. But now cryptocurrencies are very, very stable. They're becoming a regular currency, which means they're never going to go up and up and up and up. So I think they will become a currency, probably not a good investment in my humble opinion. But I am not an investment. I am by no means an investment expert at all. Um. Yes, that's it. Anything else? <laughs> oh, right. Jasper, you've picked up another thing here. No, not at all, because with that, they only focus on problem solving situations rather than focus on their own desires. Because with that, they only focus on problem solving situations rather than focus on their own desires. Well, that's true. So one of the things the video says is try to solve people's problems. If you can solve people's problems, you will make money. That's partly true, but you end up maybe not focusing on your own desires. It's a good point. Um, Nozilla's idea, surround yourself with rich people. I'm not sure if that was in the video, but that is probably true as well. 
birds of a feather flock together. So rich people tend to hang around with rich people. And if you're hanging around rich people, you'll probably learn to be like rich people. Aung said money is infinite. This was in the video. Money is infinite. So it's not a zero sum game. Zero sum game means if I make something, you lose. If I win, you lose. That's a zero sum game. Money is infinite means it's not. There's enough money for everybody. If I make money, then you can make money and you can make money, right? Everybody can make money. There's enough money for everybody in the world. Interesting idea. Yeah, great. There was something about visualise. You're right, Gazem. See, you guys did get it. You got more than me. Something about visualising imagining yourself as being wealthy in your 20s and 30s. So believe that you can be wealthy and visualize the money. There, There's, there's all things around the laws of attraction, uh, manifesting what you want. Some people believe it, other people don't. I think it's for each person to find out for themselves. Great. One more, the last one which came up from Rano Elbekovna. Rich people are not always clever. And that is so true. Rich, rich people are often not academically clever, right? There's two different kinds of clever. There's academic, academically clever. So you're kind of intelligent academically. So you study well, you go to school, you get good scores in your exams. That's academically clever. But then there's kind of streetwise. So the general cleverness or intelligence. So not academically, but you know how to do things. You know how to treat people. You know how to listen. You know how to get people to follow you. You know other things, right? There's different kinds of cleverness. And the many rich people drop out of school, right? They don't go to college. Steve Jobs, um, Richard Branson, lots of um, kind of entrepreneurs. They leave school at 16 and they, because they're not academically clever, but they make huge businesses and become very, very rich. So that's probably true. Very, very good. Excellent. I'm going to move on because I've just seen the time. <laughs> it's 11 o'clock. And I'm going to move on next to have a look. We've got two more things to finish up. If you can stick around for a bit longer. I've noticed my lessons have got longer and longer and longer. They've gone from what they started like half an hour, right? This was like a year ago. We just did half an hour. Then they became an hour. And now, I guess because it's once a week, an hour and 20 minutes is about normal. But I hope you can stick around. We're going to look next at model answers, okay? <clears throat> model answers. Come back down. So this is where on the topic of money... I'm going to ask you to ask me a question, any question, and I will give you an answer. This could be a general life question. It could be a question you think is an IELTS speaking question. Um, and I'll just give you some answers for two or three questions on the topic of money. So let's have a look, dive in deep, and let's see. <laughs> Okay. Oh, well, there's a good one. Okay, let's take this one as the first one. This is from Biran. Uh, do you think it is okay to lend money to friends or family members? Great. So I'm just going to copy this. Great, Biran. Thank you very much. It's a nice question. Whoops. Da, da, da. I'm just going to take you off for a moment. That's a question from Biran. Do you think it's okay? It's a good question. And I'll just come over here so you can see me a bit more clearly. Okay. <clears throat> da, da. Right. Do you think it's okay to lend money to friends or family members? <clears throat> um, well... I think by and large, I think it's uh, absolutely fine to lend money to friends or family members. Um, I know some people have reservations about doing that. Um, but for me, 
friends and family members when they are in need or if they need a helping hand, then, you know, I think we should be the first people to help them out. So if a my brother or my sister asks for money, I would probably go ahead and lend it to them, um, provided I had enough money to do that. I mean, I wouldn't put myself in debt and go into the red in order to help them out by lending money. So it would have to be some money that I had put away or put aside and that I was free to use and help them out. So for me, I think it's um, absolutely fine to do that. <laughs> Great, was my answer. Nice. Let's anything else. Anything else? Oh, there's a lot of people with the same question. So let's. this one is obviously a popular question. Is money everything to you? <clears throat> I will just paste and copy. Thanks, Tejpal. I see if quite a few of you have got that question as well. Okay, <clears throat> come back. Is money everything to you? <clears throat> okay. Not at all, by no means, um, by no stretches of the imagination. Whilst on the one hand, I think money is important. We need um, enough money to buy clothes and food and to enjoy a comfortable lifestyle. And maybe it's nice to splash out every once in a while and treat yourself to something special, maybe some clothes or something similar. Um, but for me, certainly money is not everything. I think um, there are much more important things in life, such as relationships with friends and family, um, enjoying the little things or the little moments in life. I know it's a bit of a cliche, but smelling the flowers, a beautiful view, watching a funny moment where the kitten is rolling on the floor playing with the wool. Those are also very important things. So whilst I think money is important, it's not the most important thing for me. Hmm, right. Great. Now, remember, I will, with help, get some transcripts. We will do the transcripts, copy this out. It's going to be in the notes later. So later on this evening, you can download them and go and check the language I'm using there, right? <clears throat> right, any others? Let's see. Okay, let's try this one. This is a looks like an interesting question from Thuet Do An. Um, is it good to buy products with famous brands? Okay. Is it good to buy products with famous brands? Is it good to buy products? Um, is it good to buy products with famous brands? <clears throat> I think I don't think I would phrase it like that. I might change it a little bit, but I, let's leave it for the moment. That's good. I think it's it's clear what you're saying. So is it good to buy products with famous brands? Um, okay. I'm not one for buying famous brands, um, partly because they're so expensive, but also because expensive things are no guarantee of high quality. Sometimes you can fork out a lot of money on an expensive brand and end up being really disappointed um, with the shabby quality of the product that you get. Um, now, if you're very rich and you're somebody who spends money like there's no tomorrow, then that's absolutely fine to buy products with famous brands. In fact, I think a lot of those people don't care so much about the quality, but rather they focus on showing off the brand to other people. It's almost like a status symbol. And so I guess in some respects, you're paying for that status symbol rather than paying for the quality of the item that you're buying. So as with many questions, it depends on who is doing the purchasing. <laughs> Great. Good. 
it's actually really good um, reviewing the vocabulary and the idioms beforehand because that put them all into my head. Um, and it was really easy. It just came out very naturally to use some of these expressions we've been using, right? Fork out, splash out. Very good. Luxurious brands. Like it. Nice questions. Guys, that's brilliant. Good. Um, that's enough questions. I'm going to move on. We're going to end up today with a little look at vocabulary review. It's Kahoot time, right? Kahoot, if you don't know it, is... Uh, an online game we're going to play together um, in order to review the vocabulary from today and to see if you remember all of the things that I've taught you or some of the things that I've taught you. Kahoot, it's great fun. So bear with me a couple of seconds while I just log in to my Kahoot account. And then we will play together and we will learn together. Here we go. Kahoot. Yeah, great. Now then, what's happening here? Yes, okay, thank you. Advertisements, come on, everywhere. <clears throat> right, good, thank you. Okay, I'm going to pull you guys in so that you're watching with me. Here we are. We're going to do the uh, this Kahoot here. We're going to play the classic one-on-one -on -one, one. So if you don't know, the, the guys, what you have to do is to log in to www.kahoot.it um, and then put in the pin. So there's a game pin. There it is. Right, so it's... Just turn on the sound. It sounds like Dracula. So it's www.kahoot.it, um, or you can use the app. Go to the game pin 5621944, put in your name, and you will be in the room, and you can play the game with me. So brilliant. We've got quite a few people joining already. Cookie, Mina, Jigs, Ross, Angel, Sammy. Brilliant. I'll just give you a few seconds to get as many people in as we can. If you can't join, don't worry. You can also give your answer in the comments box as normal. That's absolutely fine as well. Creepy music, isn't it? It's Halloween music, absolutely. <laughs> Hadi, gracias, guapo. De nada, guapa. <laughs> Sophia, you've been missing it. Well, welcome back. It is kind of Halloween. Let's just listen to the music. Look at the Kahoot. It's Halloween because it's just around the corner. That's it. Love it. Bam, bam. Bam, bam. Happy Tron. I'm very well. How are you? Good. So listen, let's get in there. <laughs> Let's get in there. Come on. Not there. Here. Oh, it's gone. The website's gone. Where's the website gone? It's Halloween and it's just disappeared. Come back. Come back. Seriously? Right. Something's gone. Something's disappeared. Bear with me. I know I'm doing something right. There we go. Right, let's get in. Come on. All this messing around. Start. Money. I love to splash mm, when I buy clothes. What's the preposition here? I love to splash mm, blank when I buy clothes. The meaning is spend a lot. We've got 20 seconds, boom, go for it. Five, four. Three. 
Wow, fantastic. The vast majority of you got it. 90 people splash out or fork out means to spend a lot of money. Great. Nice one. Let's see how the leaderboard is doing. Sandy up at the top and Dido Dido. <laughs> Sounds like the fluency, Jim. Dido Dido is second place. Great. Let's move on. That's too expens expensive. I think you paid blank the nose. I think you paid blank the nose. Come on, guys. If you've been watching, you'll know this one. Whoa, a hundred of you. That's right. A hundred of you got through, right? Pay through the nose is to pay too much money. It's too expensive. Brilliant. Well done. You've got it. Where are we next? Sandy is staying up there and Tonksy has moved into second, if I pronounced it right, and Mary Brown in third. Question number three. I don't have much money right now, so I am living on a blank. I don't have much money right now, so I'm living on a blank. Griselda, Jorginga, jo great. Ragvid, very good. Zora, very good. Shoestring, right? We had quite a few for tightrope. Tightrope, yeah. You know what it is, but it's not an expression. Living on a shoestring is the correct one. Well done. Nice. Let's check the leaderboard. Oh, Sandy's been knocked off the top by Tonksi. Right. Timu's coming in third place. It's the fourth and final question. I am a blank hunter. I like to find the best price. Now here, you have to type your answer. Ah, it's a bit more difficult. You have to type your answer. I am a blank hunter. I like to find the best price. You can type in the comments box as well. I've not done this question type before. I'm not sure if it'll work. Be careful with your spelling or it won't work. John Louise, nice. Caro Saporito, very nice. So I've given you a bit of extra time here. Taruna, that's interesting, but not very common. But possible, maybe, yes. Right. Ooh, okay, so bargain hunter, right? I'm a bargain hunter is definitely the most usual and the most common. You could say I'm a discount hunter. Six of you said that and quite a few in the um, in the comments box as well. A sale hunter, you could say, you know, I like to hunt for sales. But really, really, the collocation here is a bargain hunter. I'm a bargain hunter. That's the one. Excellent. Well done. So let's find out who is top of the pops. Third place. Dido <laughs> Dido Can't pronounce it. Gopinath out of the blue. And who's first? Whoa! Well done. Tonksi or Tonksi or Tonksi. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, forgive me. But well done for coming in first place. Nice. <laughs> oh, excellent. Brilliant. So that brings us to the end of today's live lesson. 
all on the topic, of course, on the topic of money. Thank you very, very much for joining me. If you are on YouTube, please, guys, do remember to subscribe and turn on the notifications. <laughs> I love saying that. And that's it. Just to remind you um, what I've got a video coming out at the weekend on fluency, some really important tips on fluency. And it ties in nicely because I think early next week, you're going to be able to see on Udemy the new course, Fluency for IELTS Speaking. It's based on the Fluency Gym. Um, and if you want to find out more, actually, you can go and have a look a little bit at the website. If you go to the uh, the, uh, da, 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 the Keith Speaking Academy, bum, bum, bum. Okay, here we go. Keith's all over the place. If you go to the website, right, and go to the Fluency Gym, because the Fluency Gym is where all of this started. Um, and there's a bit of information there for you about the course. You can find out more about it. Um, and it's going to be coming live on Udemy early next week. Great. That's it. Thank you very much for joining. It's been a pleasure, as always, being with you, talking about great topic of money. Um, I'm not sure about next week's topic. I've got a couple of ideas, but if you have any suggestions, do let me know in the comments box or um, on the Facebook page, Facebook group. You can let me know there as well. In the meantime, final word, if you're taking the test this weekend, best of luck. I hope it goes really well for you. And I look forward to seeing you all very, very soon next week. Take care, my friends. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Bye-bye.